Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video book review on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and the book we are taking a look at today is The FN-49, The Last Elegant Old World Military Rifle by Wayne Johnson. This is the revised and substantially expanded second edition of this book. The first edition came out in 2004, sold out, and I don't actually have a copy of the first edition, although I've looked through uh, copies that belong to friends. I've been looking forward to this revised and expanded edition for quite some time now. Uh, there were always two books on the FN-49, because in 2011 Collector Grade Publications came out with their own book called The Rifle That Ran Out of Time. And with the first edition of this it was kind of a toss-up between the two. They were both about the same scope, and they both kind of covered a different areas of the story a little, you know, some better than others. They overlapped fairly well. With the release of this book I think it's pretty much a slam dunk. That for someone who is interested in collecting the FN-49, it never hurts to have an additional book, but there's not really much need to get the collector grade book if you instead get the second edition of The Last Elegant Old World Military Rifle, which is a bit of a long title. At any rate, um, this was expanded from about 200 pages to just over 450 pages. This is published by Wet Dog Publications, uh, run by a guy named Anthony Vanderlinden. I have reviewed several of his personally authored books on uh, FN products before, uh, FN pistols, FN Mauser rifles, they are fantastic. Uh, his hand in this book is clearly evident, um, and I think he does a great job on layout and organization and Frankly, I'm very happy with every one of his books that I've ever seen, and this is no exception. So this is about two-thirds covering the FN-49, its development and the various contracts for it, and about one-third covering accessories and other information. So the first section, of course, uh, it talks about a little bit of background about FN, um, what FN did to develop semi-automatic rifles prior to the FN-49 prior to World War II. Uh, talks about Dudion Saif, who was the guy who actually designed this rifle. He was John Browning's protege, uh, John Browning's chief lead assistant at FN until Browning's death, and responsible for quite a lot of firearms developmental work. Uh, the two things that people really know him for are the FN-49 and the Browning High Power Pistol, but he really did quite a bit in addition to that as well. So uh, there are then a series of chapters here, well there's a chapter on the development of the FN-49, because Saif was working on it both before the war, he then uh, fled to England uh, during World War II, continued to work on it there, developed it up for British military trials where it never went anywhere, um, but that was a lot of the developmental basis for the rifle that FN would market um, starting in 1948. There is then a series of chapters covering every one of the major contracts, well every one of the contracts, there are about 10 contracts uh, of countries that purchased the FN-49 in various forms. They have a lot of things in, simil in, uh, in common between all of the contracts, but there were developments over time with the rifle, and there were some specific things that different countries requested or demanded for their guns. So every contract is a little bit different. Uh, after that there's some discussion of things like the uh, sniper versions of the FN-49. There are a couple different, different versions of that. Um, one of the things I particularly like in this book is that Johnson goes out of his way to include uh, sidebar notes, sometimes fairly lengthy ones, on issues that are specifically relevant to collectors today. So not necessarily things that have to do with original FN design or production, but for example um, the Century Arms, when Century Arms bought up a lot of surplus Egyptian FN-49s, uh, they got a lot of guns that were incomplete or uh, non-functional, and they rebuilt them with a wide variety of parts, which came from a wide variety of versions of FN-49s. And so today there are a lot of different, a couple major versions of Egyptian rifles, but a lot of subtle variations. And Johnson does a really good job of explaining where those came from, why they are that way, and what to look for if you are trying to get a proper and correct Egyptian pattern FN-49. Uh, same thing covers some of the safety issues regarding one and two piece firing pins and the firing pin stops. So there's some really good information in there for a practical collector as well as uh, of course a ton of historical information for the researcher. The last third of the book covering accessories covers bayonets, covers the different optics, optics cases, uh, manuals and documentation that went along with the guns. There's a lot of information on the 
it, there are a few places where like there's a ton of information where they got a bunch of details on a particular aspect of the story, and one of those is the Luxembourg order. So like there's a complete packing list for the Luxembourg order, which I don't know who's going to actually use that, but it's kind of neat to see it in there. Uh, there are also instructions for assembly, disassembly, operation of the rifle, as well as a really detailed complete part-by-part -part breakdown of every component piece of the FN-49, the different variations of them in the different uh, rifle models, and uh, some of the, the practical considerations that you need to consider with them. So. Uh, overall, it's a very cool book to have. I'm really excited to have gotten it. Like I said, I've been waiting for this second edition for a little while, um, and it is an excellent resource for anyone interested in collecting the FN49. So, uh, at the time for the time being, I would suggest you just go straight to the publisher to get it. Uh, I have a link to their website in the description below. Um, I will also put up an Amazon link if I can find one. There should be one, but this thing is really brand new on the market, so other Amazon sellers may turn up over time. Uh, that weren't available as of the recording of this video. Uh, price, again, as of this recording, is $74, which places this almost exactly the same price as the collector grade book on the FN49. I definitely, ultimately, I recommend you get both because there are some little details in the collector grade book that aren't duplicated here, mostly actually on things that aren't specifically the FN49. Uh, but it never hurts to have a larger library if you have the ability to do so. But if you're going to pick one of the two books to get, this I think is the definitive obvious uh, choice and you won't be disappointed by it. Thanks for watching.